Hello guys, welcome back. In this particular tutorial, we are going to talk about some of the important points that you need to remember from the exam perspective related to this particular section called as Einstein Copilot. And the first important thing we're going to talk about is what are the characteristics of Einstein Copilot? So there are two main characteristics. One is it understands natural language and also it is very conversational. What is the meaning of natural language? Basically, it understands the human language. It is like just like we talk to a friend. It's like talking to a friend. When you're talking with Einstein Copilot, it is talking to a friend. Users can express their questions or instructions in natural language as if they were talking to a human. That is how Einstein Copilot works. Co Einstein Copilot understands the natural language. The second important characteristic is conversational. What does that mean is whenever Einstein Copilot is responding to your queries, it is going to keep the whole context in mind, the whole dialogue in mind before giving you a response. Each user request or instruction is understood in the context of an ongoing dialogue. So that is makes it conversational. So these are the two main characteristics. One is natural language. It understands the natural language. And the second one is conversational. Then, then you also need to understand the different points related to agent force, which is another name for Einstein co-pilot. This is more of a summary of Einstein Copilot. So some of these points might also sound repetitive, but it's important from exam perspective. A copilot includes a library of actions, which is basically set of tasks the copilot can do, such as summarizing information, getting answers from knowledge base or drafting emails. So behind the scene, what does copilot uses? Copilot uses these actions, the predefined actions. Now actions are two types, standard and custom. Standard are basically what is already given to you out of the box. And custom is you can create your own actions also. Things that your agent is not able to perform with the help of standard actions. If you want to create a brand new action, for example, if let's say you want your agent to escalate a case right now, using the standard actions that it has, it is not able to escalate a case. So you can create an action to update a case to escalated status, you can create a custom action for that. And that custom action you can invoke, your copilot can invoke. So copilot includes a list of actions. Now, what are the different types of standard actions? There is summarizing the record, fetching the record by the record name, drafting an email. So there are things this copilot can do and it is driven off of what actions includes a library of action, which is basically the set of tasks the copilot can do. What are topics? Topics are a layer of organization that help your co-pilot make more accurate decisions and generate more relevant, predictable responses. Every action in a co-pilot is assigned to a topic. So think of topic as a category. So your agent must be skilled in multiple things, right? So what you did is you divided those into different categories and that each category is called as a topic. And under that topic, you are going to have multiple actions that are tied to that particular topic. Event logs help you monitor and troubleshoot the co-pilot conversation activity with Salesforce users. So if you want to troubleshoot how your agent is doing, if you want to see how your agent is responding to the user request, you can check out the event log. Event log is a place where you can monitor and troubleshoot the co-pilot conversational activity with Salesforce user. If you want to troubleshoot anything, event log is the place to come to. Copilot can help you boost productivity by summarizing lead, opportunity, and other CRM records. So what can a copilot do? It can help you increase your productivity by summarizing record. And summarizing record is very, very important, very crucial because you don't have to glance through hundreds of fields to come to a conclusion. Summarizing record will pick up the most critical pieces of information and it will summarize the record for you. And that will save you a lot of time. To make a decision now the next important thing is types of einstein co-pilot action so there are two major type one is called as the standard and the other one is called as the custom if things cannot be done using the standard actions that are available to you you can create your own custom action and in order to create these custom actions you can use flows apex or prompt templates so three things that you can use in order to create custom action is flows Second one is Apex and the third one is Prompt Template. 
For example, one of the very important use case that we are going to do in this particular section is escalating a case. You can fetch the case information. You don't need any action for that. There is already an existing action called retrieve the record. Then there's an action to summarize the record. So if I'm asking the my agent, the AI assistant to, hey, give me the summary of this case, it will be able to give me using the standard actions. But let's say if I ask the agent to give me, uh, to escalate the case, agent will say, I don't know, I don't have the permission to escalate a case. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to create a custom action behind the scene and that custom action, it we will tie it to our agent, we'll give that action to our agent, and then agent will be able to use that escalate case option to escalate the case. And through that, what we are going to do behind the scene, we're going to use a flow. All that flow will be doing is updating the case status to escalate it, that's all. So we can create custom actions with the help of flows or apex or prompt template. Okay, and we will see how to use them. Then co-pilot planner service and co-pilot builder. So there are two important things you have to remember. Planner service is also called as the reasoning engine. So planner service basically orchestrates how a co-pilot launches actions during a conversation to accomplish a task for the user. So when things are in the runtime, right? A user has asked for something. Now behind the scene, the what the there's going to be a planner service which is going to figure out okay this question belongs to this topic okay i've selected the topic then under the topic which action do i need to invoke uh, fulfill that request so all this orchestration is what is the purpose of the planner service or the reasoning engine now next one is copilot builder it's a tool for managing copilot actions settings testing conversation and auditing activity we've already seen a copilot builder remember we had an option there was a button to say open in builder that opens up your copilot builder and in that copilot builder you were able to create new topics you were able to configure actions you were able to test your uh, Einstein co-pilot you were also able to audit the activity you can do all of these things within your co-pilot builder now the last important thing is how to get access to Einstein co-pilot so you need a permission set group and what is the name of the permission set group Einstein co-pilot for Salesforce user there is a permission set group with this name that is what you need to give in order to access Einstein co-pilot there are basically two types of permission set groups. So if I go over to Salesforce and if I go to the permission set group, you're going to find two main ones. Click on all. One is the Copilot Salesforce admin permission set group and the other one is Copilot Salesforce user permission set group. Okay, so there are two permission set group. I'm going to open both of them here. I'll go back open it in a new tab and open this one in a new tab as well. So this one is called as it's launching. This one is the admin permission set group and this one is the user permission set group. Under this group, you have two permission sets. Under this group also, you have two permission sets. So in this admin permission set group, you have one for prompt template user and if you remember this is basically if you want to run prompt templates this is the permission set you need and the other permission set it has is einstein copilot for salesforce admin now what does this permission set do it allows the users to build and manage in org copilot so if you want to manage your agents you will need einstein copilot for salesforce admin and what is the other one which is the copilot salesforce user it has the same prompt prompt template user which is basically to run and the other one is einstein copilot for salesforce user it only gives user access to einstein copilot ai assistant in salesforce you won't be able to manage these copilots you will only be able to access these okay so these are the two permission set group you need to remember copilot salesforce user permission set group and copilot salesforce admin permission set group so this is the whole summary of the Einstein co-pilot or the agent force. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying these tutorials. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.